Sorry na, sorry na, sorry na. Okay. Alright, ready na tayo. Kaya lo mastix mas dili. Alright, we'll, con- we'll continue that one. So, obviously, we still have a lot of things to learn when it comes to, ano ha, falling deep utility. Wag ganon! Ano ba yung ganon? Nababali yung, ano, nababali yung halaman nyo? Ay, yung, yung dahon? Ba't nababali? Matigas? Ano ba? Kayo talaga? Paano kayo magiging TikTok stars niyan? Di ba? So, di ba? Okay, so, nasa na ba tayo? Um... Georgia Lamblia, um, this one, I think we ended here less, yeah, earlier, right? So, describe the motility, falling leaf motility or jerky motility. Appearance is a an old man with eyeglasses. Okay, that's the basic appearance of it. Sir, excuse me po. Okay. Di po pa, di ba po kayo naka-screen share? Ay, hindi pala ako naka-screen share. Yeah, sorry. I'm only available in... in... Okay, here we go. Window... Oh, not that. Not window. I think the whole screen. Screen number two. Okay. Screen number... Yeah, this one. Cool. Can you guys see it? Okay. All right. Very good. Okay. Clear? Is it clear now? You guys yes, see sir. Now? All right. Now, um, how many pairs of flagella are present in Georgia Lambria? So, did I ask this exam? Um, I think so. Um, they would give you a brief description of the morphology of the organism. Yes, yeah, yeah it's a brief. Uh, yeah, I've, I've never really ex- encountered it during. Baka kasi hindi lang tinanong ng mga professor ko. Okay, but um, I remember. F- I remember some of my students still ask me, um, how many pairs ba talaga sir? And um, when I what I what I gathered from my exams, uh, what I gathered from the books rather. Is that it has four pairs. There's actually eight flagella, four pairs of it. It's uh, um, among the organisms that we are going to discuss, Giardia lamblia has what you call um, a symmetrical appearance or biological symmetry. Okay, what do you mean by biological symmetry? Let me just type what symmetry. Biological symmetry. Okay, so biological symmetry is parang ikaw, um, Mark. Um, bigyan mo nga kami ng isang clear shot ng mukha mo on the camera mark. Kasi ikaw yung nakasalamin eh. Ayan, baba ka ng konti. Diba, pantay yung mata ni Mark, pantay yung balbas ni Mark, yung ilong niya, yung ilong niya dalawa ang butas, yung tenga niya dalawa, may butas din both. So that is considered as biological symmetry, right? So organisms that exhibit biological symmetry, when you cut them in half, the other half almost similarly looks like itself. Okay, so similar to Mark, um, all a uh, young man with glasses. Okay, a young man with glasses. Um, Georgia Lamblia, an old man with glasses, has four pla- flagella, and there is a specific location for each flagellar structure. Okay, so lateral flagella crossed, uh, and then another lateral fl- lateral flagella that is uncrossed, and a central flagella and a posterior flagella. So there are four pairs that you are going to expect, and when there's four, pair, when you say pairs, there's two of them. So four, four times two is eight. Okay, para wal, para wag kayong mas stress. Okay, so eight na binigay kung number. There is actually eight flagella, but they are all in pairs. Okay, okay ba? Okay, Jenilyn, si Jenilyn lang ang tumatango. Bakit si Jenilyn lang ang tumatango class? <laughs> si okay yung, yung, ba yung, si si Binti ang ang ano niya, ang tango niya. Ba- hmm. Ganon, di ba? Ganon. All right. Now, mode, mode of transmission of Giardia lamblia is of course the ingestion of cysts, which is basically the infective stage, okay? Giardia lamblia's infective stage is the cysts. Okay? Now, characteristic shape of the cysts of Giardia lamblia Okay, so what we were talking about, old man with with eyeglasses, the one that has, uh, the one that has flagella present is the trophozoite. Now, when we're talking about the cyst, the cyst's appearance is different. It is football shape and it's characterized as, you know, as a smiling cyst. Okay, the appearance is a smiling cyst because it has like a sort of a curve. Okay, so not not all the time it's football shape. Uh, sometimes it's a sphere. It looks like a sphere. But the characteristic appear the what, the most important thing that you need to take note is that it has a slight curve that makes it look like it's smiling at you. That's the that's how um, biologists or parasitologists in the past described it. Okay, so the word smiling cyst. If you see something 
um, or if you see something with the word smile on it or just something that or assist with a with a slight curve resembling a smile or a grin okay that is automatically select Giardia lamblia okay now pathologic condition associated with Giardia lamblia so maybe you forgot maybe you forgot uh, what the organism looks like uh, and you want to rely on or you want to rely on the clinical findings so malabsorption of fats are usually characteristic of giardiasis and the findings is usually a frothy stool or the term in, the correct terminology or the medical terminology for that one is steatorrhea okay now ano bang itsura ng frothy na stool who here can describe to me what the frothy stool looks like oh wala na okay bibigyan ko kayo ng bibigyan ko kayo ng ano ng um, I wouldn't say it's a, an, an, an analogy more or less a similar appearance to it Sino dito ang umiinom ng McFloat? McFloat. Para, para, ma, para, ma, para ma, mandiri kayo sa McFloat. Sino ang umiinom ng McFloat? Raise your hands if you drink McFloat. Ayan, ang dami o. Oh. Ayan. After ng lecture na to, hindi na kayo iinom ng McFloat. Feeling ko. So, when a patient has theaturea, alam niyo yung con the place between the... Uh, the Sunday, di ba may Sunday yung taas ng McFloat? And then, pag naglagay ka ng Sunday, may magpo-form na bubbles. Ganon ang itsura ng pupu ng patient na merong steatorrhea. Yung bubble formation na yon, ganon yung itsura niya. So, that is a frothy stool. Okay? So, parang bubbles yung pupu niya. Okay? Ganon. Ganon ano ha? Ganon, Nigel. Marivik, why are you raising your hand? Do you have frothy stools, Marivik? Di, sir, hindi ko lang po nababa. <laughs> Sorry naman. I thought, I thought Uminom. sir, meron Uminom. ako doon. We're late. Uminom lang po. Ala ko, gano'n yung sasabihin niya. Sir, meron ako doon. We're late. Ngayon nga, actually. Ganun. Nagka-GR diocese si ako, sir. Ganun. Ala ko, gano'n. Nag-raise ka ng hand mo. Alright. Thank you, Mary Vic, for sharing, ano, for sharing your... Thoughts. Charing. Charing. Anyway, let's move on. Now, what test is used to demonstrate the trophozoids in duodenal, con uh, duodenal content? So, um, you usually, patients with, um, patients with DR diasis, um, if the doctor really wants to get an immediate diagnosis without looking at the stool, because sometimes the stool findings may be subjective. It depends on the, it depends on the, what do you call this? It depends on the technologist. On who on or how the diagnosis can uh, can be done, like for example, um, graduate kaka graduate lang ni ano kaka graduate lang ni kaka graduate lang ni sino ba dito ang feeling kong kaka graduate si Nigel si Nigel lang ang feeling kong kaka graduate eh. <laughs> ang ang sama ng ugali mo sir o sige na isama na natin si Alexis o ayan na isama na natin si Alexis tsaka si si, si Nigel ka graduate tsaka si Alexis for example ako uh, si Nigel ang unang naka graduate okay I'm not I, okay, wala, walang spoilers sir spoilers <laughs> walang spoilers ano ba <laughs> wala, wala akong ibig sabihin na hindi yan premonition na wala, wala akong sinabing premonition okay so for example si Nigel is matagal na alam nakakita na siya ng ganyan ganyan di ba so hindi maniwala si hindi maniwala naniwala si doctor sa kanya and then the night shift nagpakuha ulit si doctor na ano wala nakita si Alexis right wala nakita si Alexis na Giardia Sabi ni doktor, akala ko mistiya today ang patient tapos nakakita ng Giardia lamblia cyst. Pero hindi, hindi na nila makita in subsequent samples. So what they would do is they would get a patient's duodenal, uh, duodenal pump. So binabombahan yung stomach ni patient or they would put an endoscope and they would get uh, at least reach the duodenum of the patient. And they would do what they call the enterostring test. So the enterostring test basically is like a serological test. To determine if the organism is present in the patient's duodenal content, enterosting test can be can be done on duodenal content, uh, on any part of the intestine. But the most, uh, but the most important part where it can call when it where it has ninety percent accuracy, if it's actually ha if your patient has actually has Giardia lamblia, is um is on the duodenum. Okay? So, marami pa tayo. May jejunum pa tayo. Meron pa tayong ano eh. Meron pa tayong iba't ibang parts ng, uh, ng small intestine. But the duodenal content is basically the most important part. 
to analyze. Now, in patients with negative stool examination, what tests may be used? We can use small bowel, bowel biopsies, okay? Sorry, we can use small bowel biopsies because they will form, they will form, if, uh, they will form um, lesions also in patients with uh, these types of infections. Now, homosexual uh, practices are included also in cases of GRJ lamblia, hence the term gay bowel syndrome. Okay, the terminology is gay bowel syndrome. We're not gonna go. We're gonna. We're not gonna go. We're not gonna go delve deep into that one. I, I want you guys to understand that um, um, there are certain uh, there are cer certain copulatory practices or di ba magandang or coital practices. Ayo ko lang baka mamaya segi ma ma ano tayo, ma demonetize tayo kung ano di ba di ba di ba. So there are certain coital practices that some people engage in, individuals engage in, and if the patient is in in the if the patient is uh, if the patient were to uh, if the patient were to ingest the cysts from that particular person, then that patient can get that patient can get GRJ lamblia, simply as that. Okay, hence the term gay bowel syndrome. For example, he didn't go to any place, he didn't go to, but he was he practices gay, uh, he practices some um, gay sex. Obviously, there is going to be obviously there is going to be some sort of um, introduction of the trophocytes, which is of course ingestion. Of course, that's something else that will that I will leave in your minds, na lang. Okay, we're not going to talk about that deeper because it's a little bit controversial. Anyway, what is the characteristic shape of cactus uh, chylomastix mesnili trophozoite? So, chylomastix uh, is a trophozoite that has a lemon shape. Or a pear shape, we could say, uh, sorry, a pear shaped trophozoite, and the cyst has a lemon shaped trophozoite, uh, lemon, lemon or nipple shaped cyst. Wala masyado, wag ma, wag ma ano ha, wag, wag masyado, oh, Arnie at saka Mark ha, walang kalokohan ha. Okay? So it's nipple or, uh, or shutong, shutong na lang, gawin na lang natin ba ano, kaba, kabaklaan, okay? So shutong, okay? So mukha siyang shutong or mukha siyang lemon, okay? Clear? You guys have seen a lemon already, you guys have seen a pear. Obviously, they are they basically uh, they are almost similar to uh, to to GRG lambda, but the difference is that the trophozoites doesn't doesn't have the characteristic old man and eyeglasses appearance. Okay, now um, what differentiates the uh, the species of Chylomastix is that it has what you call a spiral groove. In the posterior portion of the uh, of the of the trophozoite, okay, there's a spiral groove, and the characteristic motility of Chylomastix mesnili, the trophozoites. Again, we're still talking about the trophozoites because they're the only ones that are moving. Is of course this corkscrew or spiral motility. Okay, wala na hindi na ako magpapademo. Nuloloka ako sa inyo eh. Loka ako sa, sa demo ninyo eh. Okay? Hindi ko na pa de-demo. Huwag kayo mag-alala. Okay? Dinidemo ni Mark Segi. Oh. Dinidemo. <laughs> ano na naman yan? Paano ka mag-demo ng spiral or corkscrew? Ikaganon mo lang yung kamay mo. Ano ba? Ako talaga, Mark. Okay? Hindi kayo marunong talaga mag-demo. Kaya spiral. Oo. Oh. Oo. Oh, spiral. Oo. Oh. Okay, mo, wag siya. Ano na naman yung ginagawa ni like, screwdriver ka naman yan, Mark? Eh, anong pinagagawa mo, Mark? Lululoko mo kami, Mr. Ano ha, Mr. Net Moderator. Now, Trichomonas is another organism that you need to talk about. It's a parasite that is also a uh, member of the family Mastigophora. Okay? Meaning it's a flagellate. Okay? And there are three species that you need to talk about, but let's talk about their habitats first. Um, habitat of uh, Trichomonas hominis is in the intestines, Trichomonas thenax is in the oral cavity, and Trichomonas vaginalis is in, of course, the genitals, okay? So, vaginalis, so sa vagina lang siya, pwede makita. Pwede din sa guys, okay? Alright? Okay, parang gusto kong gumawa kami ng TikTok ni Mark, no? Gagawa kami ng TikTok ni Mark. Magbibigay ako ng ano, magbibigay, demonstrate the appearance of of, uh, demonstrate the motility of this. Ganon. No? Magpapagayon na ako. Tapos, gaganon-ganon si Mark kung ano-ano mga kung ano-ano mga crap ang pinapakita ni Mark doon sa ano. ba? Okay. Now, um, obviously, the most important one that you guys need to remember is about Trichomonas vaginalis. But, we are going to differentiate the three by size. The largest one is, of course, Trichomonas vaginalis. Medium sized is, of course, um, Trichomonas hominis and Trichomonas tenax is the smallest. The thickened structure in the membrane of Trichomonas species is known as the costa. 
okay and the size uh, differentiate the by stra by pay by species for trichomonas hominis the costa uh, uh, is along the lines or the undulating membrane of the organism there is a, there's an undulating membrane and uh, for trichomonas linux is two-thirds and for trichomonas vaginalis it's about one-fourth the costa okay so there is an undulating membrane it moves it has a flagella but uh the way it moves is that it has like a the flagella the movement via the flagella is facilitated by the undulating membrane okay so parang tumutulong si undulating membrane para gumalaw yung organism okay unlike unlike kay Georgia Lamblia meron siyang parabasal body na yun yung nagbibigay ng energy para gumalaw yung organism ito parang kailang parang yung undulating membrane yan yung parang propeller niya um, if you guys have seen a if you guys have seen like a, um the bottom of a ship you'd see like parang may, may electric fan sa ilalim ng mga ano ng mga bark bang, bangka so parang ganun yun, yun, yun that is the the analogy that I would that I would uh, correlate with the undulating membrane okay now let's talk about um let's talk about trichomonas uh the nuclei all trichomonas has an ovoidal nuclei nucleus except for trichomonas tinax okay and there is a there is an inclusion body in trichomonas species but in only one particular species and it's trichomonas vaginalis and it has a siderophilic granule okay it has a siderophilic granule and what specimen may be used to demonstrate uh, the species of trichomonas for trichomonas hominis because it's found in the intestine or the git it's obviously the stool for trichomonas tinax it's oral swab and for trichomonas vaginalis it's genital swabs now sir i would ask you a question sir kasi meron akong mga students dati na patient uh, may patient sila sa stool nakakita ng trichomonas vaginalis true or false can we get it on the stool patay tayo dyan. true or false Meron kasi silang patient na ano. Pinag-aralan yun, dinaan pa yun sa kung saan-saan, and they actually set the sample for PCR analysis, and they did find trichomonas vaginalis. Is it possible? And if it is, if it, yeah, true. Okay, Mark, explain to me why. Siyempre, lagi ako magtatanong ng why. Patay tayo dyan, di ba? Laging ganun. Alright, why do you think? Uh, sa tingin ko, sir, parang same dun sa, ano, Doon sa sex bowel, ano ba yun? Gay bowel syndrome. Okay. So, Yung same be, principle nun. Alright. So, it could be like that. Or, it could be a contamination. Diba? It could be a form of contamination. Diba? Diba, diba, diba? Pwede din yun. Okay? So, it could be either sexual practices or it could be contamination. Yun lang yung ano. Because maybe leaky yung tulo nung ano, nung patient. Diba? In case, this is, of course, in cases of females. Okay, so maybe, maybe, I don't know, maybe nag-collect nag sila, nag sila ng swab or nag-collect sila ng urine sample and it's, or sort of like, sort of like, hindi siya nag-wash properly. So it could be a form of contamination. There is technical, that's the reason why it is important for you guys to understand pre-analytic considerations. Okay? Right, okay, okay. So, okay, guys. So you might get you might get a case, right? You might get a case, something like that. So it does happen in it does happen in the clinical laboratory, and you shouldn't be surprised. Okay. So at least you guys know you guys have an understanding. Now, what specimens may be used to demonstrate trichomonas or uh, to demonstrate trichomonas? Um, we've answered that already. I'm sorry. Let's move on to the disease caused by trichomonas vaginalis. Um, obviously, I guess you guys have already remembered. The ping pong disease they call it ping pong disease and usually it has something to do with the carrier and the reservoir host okay so for the carrier it's usually the males they don't have any form of symptomology or if they do have symptomology it usually is mild okay it's usually a mild form of symptom that nobody would nobody would expect that it is actually trichomonas vaginalis now the reservoir host where majority of the time majority of the infections would uh, majority of the infection would manifest uh, itself in a form of symptoms will be the female okay will be the females hence the term ping pong disease bakit ping pong ibabalik lang ni babae ibabalik lang ni babae kay lalaki tapos si lalaki if he is he, if he has a lot of paramours diba ayoko ng ano ayoko ng term na kabet okay 
para more ang ginamit ko, di ba? Kasi nga Game of Thrones ang mga references, references ko. Kung marami kang para more, di ba? Di ba, Mark? Kung marami kang para more, pwede mong ipingpong sa kanila yung mga yung infection. All right? So malay niyo, malay mo naman, malay mo naman si Arnie nakakuha dun sa isa sa mga para more mo kasi friends kayo ni Arnie, di ba? Marami kang para more. Tapos si Arnie madami ding para more, kaya siya nagpi-pingpong. Gets? Gets kung bakit pingpong? Okay? Again, it has something to do with the, the principles of what I'm saying is the coital practices of the patient. Okay? It depends on the... Kaya hindi pwede yung magulo ang buhay, ha? Huwag magulo ang buhay, valiant, ha? Pagka, ano, pagka tapos ng klase, ha? Okay? Okay? Alright? Jenilyn, ikaw din, ha? Tsaka ikaw din, Eliza, ha? I'd like to ano, add something to that ping-pong disease. Oh, okay. Sige, sir. So, di ba yung mm, ping-pong? Uh, di ba? So, nag-serve kayo ng ball, it gets returned. So, uh, basically, nagkakaroon ng rally. Okay? <laughs> rally. What I mean is, what I mean is, so let's say you have the male partner and the female partner. So, let's just say that uh, one of them is may, may case of infidelity. So, what happens is, they would now get both a uh, trichomonas. Now, yung female, magpapatreatment, okay, sumawala yung trichomonas. But since, hindi naman alam nung lalaki, since mostly carrier siya, okay, pabalik-balik sa kanya, pabalik-balik-balik yung disease dun sa female. Okay, that's why it's called ping-pong. Okay, when, one, when one party gets treated but not the other. Hmm. Okay, very good, very good, very good. Maganda ang ano, maganda din ang ano. Rally talaga ang term. Para nagre-relay race lang sila. Para pagod na, pagod <laughs> so, na si girl, pagod na si girl na mag-treatment tapos sila lalaki binibigyan lang ng binibigyan ng ano, binibigyan lang ng binibigyan. Pag tatanong na siyempre ang doktor. Napaka na, na, maloloka ang doktor siyempre kaya ping-pong disease nga. Naloka ang doktor, ginagamot na ginagamot pa ulit-ulit tapos wala naman palang nangyayari. Tiningnan yung lalaki. Oh. <laughs> Si lalaki pala ay maraming paramours. O, di ba? Ayoko ng term na kabit. Gusto ko paramour. Para social. Di ba? Okay. Now, um, let's talk about the pathognomonic finding in females, female patients with trichomonas vaginalis. They call it a strawberry cervix because it's so inflamed that it looks like a, it looks like a strawberry. Okay? Strawberry cervix. Again, it has... Uh, it, the, 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 this terminology or this particular um, common term... Uh, would be for histopathology, but um, since I'm giving you guys a holistic approach towards parasitology, we're, we're going to leave it at that. Now, um, stains that we may, we may use to demonstrate trichomonas, um, we have Gemsa, Paps, Romanowski, and Acridine stains. Actually, for Pap smears, uh, usually it's uh, sorry, it's usually Pap smear that can detect it. Why? Because um, vaginal fluid is often time of pap smears. Usually, uh, a trichomonas usually get recovered accidentally in pap smears. Ang tinitingnan sa pap smears actually malignancy, pero na accidentally na nakuha ni doktor. Ay, may trichomonas ka pala. <laughs> Alright? So, ganun yung, ganun yung culture sa atin sa Pilipinas. Uh, makikita sa histopathology, parang namumroblema si, si, namumroblema si female patient. Sabi niya, masakit lagi yung ano niya, yung, may masakit lagi sa puso niya kahit na hindi naman siya ano hindi naman siya hindi naman siya usually nagkakaroon ng PMS all right and then so okay sige pinagawa ni doktor ng ano pinagawa na doktor ng pap smear baka nga merong merong form of um, it could be it could be an oncological case I expect ni doktor na o baka mayroon ka palang ano mayroon ka palang problem sa sa uterus mo and then at the end Ang problema pala is trichomonas. It accidentally get like, discovered the, uh, by the physician. So, yun. Yun yung, ano, yun yung makikita natin. Uh, na, kaya tinatawag na, na strawberry cervix. Now, um, culture media maybe that may be used. Again, we can use culture media. Um, according to, I researched this prior to our lecture. They don't use this anymore. But in your exams, they, it may be asked also. Modified diamond. Uh, modified diamond media and fiber Feinberg and Whittington culture media actually in one of the exams that I took uh, I think a mock exams that I took in the uh, in Axe Review Center they say they gave us Feinberg and Whittington culture media so that is something that you might need to consider remembering okay 
Now, let's talk about hemoflagellates. From the term itself, it's, it's in the blood. So, we're done with genital and intestinal flagellates. So, now we're going to go with the species of Phylum mastigophora uh, that is usually seen in the blood. Now, there are two examples of those hemoflagellates. We have Leishmania and Trypanosoma. Okay? I know, sir, akala ko Leishmania ang basa dun, sir. Sa Animal Planet ko yan na, ano, na realize nung nanood ako ng, ano ba yun? Monsters Inside Me. It's not pronounced as Leishmania pala. When I was in when I was in, when I was in college when I was when I just graduated recently I found the show Monsters Inside Me it, they pronounce it as Lishmania diba ang arte ko talaga diba ang arte sir so, diba para hindi niyo makakalimutan si Lishmania kasi um in your exams you might get you might get it in hematology or in microbiology okay so important din na discussion natin si hemoflagellates okay Especially if you are going to countries like um, countries like in the Middle East, as well as in certain places in Europe. Okay, so malay nyo, meron tayo mga medics dito na bupunta ng Europe, de ba? Hindi kayo magpursu ng medicine. Malay natin, de ba? Now, what disease is caused by each type of uh, trypanosome? So let's go with trypanosoma first. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, um, we have Rhodesia, uh, Trypanosoma rhodosiense, Trypanosoma gambiense, and Trypanosoma cruzi. Um, a big X, uh, or put a big star on Trypanosoma cruzi. We're going to discuss it a little bit later on. But for tripo, Trypanosoma rhodosiense, it's the East African sleeping sickness. Trypanosoma gambiense is West African sleeping sickness. And the, the one that I asked, you to, I asked you to put a star on is the one that causes Chagas disease. Okay? Now, we're going to go with the vectors. Again, you have to remember the vectors. Please don't forget that the uh, ones that causes sleeping sickness is transmitted to us humans by the sese fly. And Trypanosoma cruzi is the only one that is transmitted to people by the assassin bug. Um, not sure if you guys have seen the uh, post that is that has gone viral on Facebook. Um, in the Philippines, they they showed us a picture of a they showed they they would show a picture of the assassin bug, and then, ang caption niya is, ang cute naman ng salagubang na to. Tapos assassin bug pala yon. Tapos may nag-comment na medtech sa iba ba? Hindi yan asa hindi yan hindi yan salagubang assassin bug yan. Yun yung nagkukos ng Chagas disease. So doon, kaya siya naging viral. And then parang napunta pa atay sa Jessica Soho reports. Hindi ko maalala. Parang na KMJS yun eh. So I'm not sure if it is actually a true assassin bug because I didn't finish the whole video. But um, be careful. I think there in the Philippines we have we have Trypanosoma cruzi now there in the Philippines. So anyway, let's continue. Um, so those are the vectors. Please don't forget the sese fly and the assassin bug or what we call the triatomid bug. Okay, the triatomid bug because it has like a three uh, three spike. It has three spikes on it. Parang meron siyang, parang it looks like a beetle, but it's not really a beetle. Okay. Um. Yeah. So what diseases are associated with leishmania? So we're going to talk about leishmania now. So leishmaniasis, of course. Pero sir, anong bakit uh, bakit per species? Because we have the new world and the old world. Uh, sorry, the new world or the old world or the mucotaneous leishmaniasis. So please don't forget, um, leishmania tropica causes the old world cutaneous leishmaniasis and leishmania brasiliensis, known as the new world leishmaniasis or um, mucutaneous leishmaniasis or another ner another terminology of that one is espundia or bubas for um, for your reference. And then we have what you call leishmania donovani, kala azar. Ano ba? Nakaka-alaazar naman itong pinag-aaralan pinag namin, sir. Napakadami. Kala-azar naman. Diba? Ganon. Para mabilis nyo maalala. Okay? Now, there are developmental stages for hemoflagellates. Please don't forget. Okay? Please don't forget these terms. Okay? Amastigote, promastigote, epimastigote, or tritomastigote. They have several terminologies associated with each. The leishmania form is the amastigote stage. The promastigote form is known as the uh, leptomonal form. Epimastigote or the critidial form. Eh, and tripomastigote is basically the tripomastigote. So they are stages, okay? So hindi, pa, hindi ibig sabihin na pag sinabing leishmania form, 
a masti goat lang ang stage na. No, it still goes on the same f- stages, but it has a characteristic appearance of Lishmania. And Tripomasti goat has a characteristic of a Tripomasti goat. Okay? Oh, but tri- Tripanosoma. Okay? So, yun lang yun. So, don't get confused with these things. Okay? So, all of them, they still undergo the same life cycle. They still undergo the... Um, the uh, Sorry. Hemoflagellates still undergo apet. That's my shortcut for that one. Amanda, kung nakikinig ka, Amanda. Okay? We have apet, amastigote, promastigote, epimastigote, and tripomastigote. So, see? All, uh, another thing that you need to remember is, of course, the other names for these stages. Of course, leishmania, leptono, lepto, leptomonal, and the critidial forms. Um... In order, right now, the hemoflagellate that, un- does na- that undergoes all stages, of course, is Trypanosoma cruzi. Okay, so each of them have their own forms, but Leishmania is the only one that will complete all forms. Okay, they will undergo all developmental stages, and it is Trypanosoma cruzi. Now, stages of development undergone by the Leishmania group, the Amastigote and the Promastigote stage. The Bruce, uh, the the Trypanosoma Bruce group, or the other ones that I mentioned earlier, is the epimastigote and the trypanosomate stages. Let's go with the trypanosomes. A, discu- a quick discussion on the trypanosomes. Um, <clears throat> what stages of development does the trypanosoma Bruce group um, develop? Uh, development stages um, occur in. Sorry. In invertebrates, it or the vector, usually the epimastigote stage, and when the epimastigote uh, gets injected by either the sese fly, um, it will give it to its mammalian host, which will harbor the tripomastigote stages. Okay, so babalikan lang natin. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. So, for example, these two, these two are the members of the Bruce group, the Ambiensi and the Rhodosiensi. So the sese fly will harbor the amastigote stages while the mammalian host or humans in this case because we're studying medical parasitology will harbor the what the 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 promastigote stages okay so that is basically the uh, com, the com, the ba- the that is the essentials of the life cycle okay now Let's talk about Trypanosoma cruzi. Um, it's a little bit complicated, okay? So in the invertebrate host, or in the the uh, in the invertebrate host, it will go to the gut and the mid gut. In the gut, the trypanosomates will develop, and then they would go to the mid gut where they will form epimastigotes. Okay. Now it will inject it to the mammalian host and the trypanosomates. Uh, and the and in the blood, the epimastigotes will go. Uh, sorry, the tripomastigotes will go to the tissue and form amastigotes. So clear? Medyo straightforward lang siya. So si so si uh, start pala muna tayo sa mid gut. Pupunta siya sa mid gut siya. Tapos pupunta siya sa gut niya. Kasi paakyat na sa ano? Paakyat na sa may proboscis nung proboscis nung intermediate host. Inject sa yoyong yung tripomastigote as the human host. Okay? So, pa- medical parasitology tayo. But other organisms can be infected by trypanosomas. Okay? So, please don't forget that. Or right, Chagas disease. But for humans, it's this way. Okay? So, the amastigo, the tripomastigo, the epimastigo that develops in the mid-gut will go to the gut. It will go up to the proboscis. And then when it goes for a blood meal, it will inject it into the bloodstream of the patient. And the tripomastigotes will go to the tissue and undergo a mastigote form. Then the life cycle continues back again when the organism or when the invertebrate host takes a blood meal where it sucks up some of the blood or the tissue fluids where amastigotes are present. The amastigotes, the amastigotes will go to the mid gut because there's blood because it's ingested there. It will develop to epimastigote, and when it becomes an epimastigote, and uh, when it develops an epimastigote to a tropomastigote, it will go back up to the gut, and the drive cycle continues. Diba pa ulit ulit lang. Now, what about the promastigote stages? Because we're talking about human, uh, human life cycle, we are not going to discuss the promastigote, um, the promastigote stages. Okay. Usually, it occurs in the blood, uh, bl- uh, in the blood cells, because these are these organisms are intracellular parasites. They will not they will not develop if they do not 
undergo if they don't pirate or they don't uh they don't enter the bloodstream okay now what are the characteristics what's the characteristic utility of trypanosomes mark pakita mo nga sa akin kung paano ka magano ng wavy and spiral motion <laughs> <laughs> ang hirap ang hirap um, bigyan ko kayo ng ano bigyan ko kayo ng example hindi ako sasayaw ha huwag kayo itusera dyan <laughs> hindi ako sasayaw um, alam niyo yung mga hula dancers sa Hawaii yan yeah, yung mga diba diba umiikot-ikot pa sila tapos gumigiling-giling pa sila Parang imagine niyo ganun yung ano para silang hula dancers. Actually that's one of the when we under when we went on training to uh, I think uh, where was it? Oh, I think somewhere in I think I w- went somewhere in uh, I think a convention somewhere. Uh, we went to a convention somewhere so here in the Middle East. They told us that the that the characteristic motility of trypanosomes is similar to a hula dancer. Kasi umiikot-ikot na siya tapos nagwe nagumigiling-giling pa siya. So ganun. All right, so wavy and spiral motion. So please don't forget that one. Now, um, what are the characteristic vectors of Trypanosoma rhodocyanci? rhodocyanci? Um, the specific ones. We want to know the actual name. Okay, so the correct. Uh, sorry, the specific. Uh, the specific genus. Okay, so it's Glossina species, but per organism it's different. Okay, so for rhodocyanci, uh, for rhodocyanci, it's Glossina morsitans and Glossina swinertoni. Okay. For Gambiansi, it's Glucina palpala, palpalis and sorry, Glucina palpalis and Glucina tachinoides. Okay, for that, for those organisms. Now, for the assassin bugs, the specific assassin bug vectors for Trypanosoma cruzi, it's the Triatoma, Triatoma infestans, or there's two more, Rod- Rodneus prolixus and Panostrongulus magistus. All right, magistus, the diva, magician. Okay. And it's panstrongulus magistus. Okay? Magister, magician. Okay? Now, what is the terminal stage of disease caused by the Brousset group? It's known as the sleeping stage. It's characterized by the difficulty to arouse the patient to wake up. Okay? Hence the term sleeping disease, known as the sleeping stage. So basically, ano ba nangyayari sa kanila? If you go to Google right now, um, sorry, if you go to YouTube right now and search for sleeping disease, you'll see that these are patients that cannot be sleep, uh, that cannot be awoken. From their deep slumber. So, lagi lang silang ganun. Kasi, kasi parang yan yung end stage. Eh. Hindi ka na magigising. It's like, a, it's like an endless sleep that you will go in. Okay, now. The vector will produce a particular lesion. If it's an, if it's an assassin bug. It's known as a chagoma. Okay? Chagoma. And in this particular chagoma, the trypanosoma cruzi infects the RES or the reticuloendothelial system of our body. Then my reticular endothelial system natin. Let's talk about it. Let me cancel the slideshow and I will ask my stu- let, I will ask the students if they under if they remember their histology. Where is your RES system? Give me an example of an organ that has RES. Reticular endothelial system. Give me an organ in your body that has RES. Histology tayo. Basic histology tayo, patay tayo dyan. You can use Google, don't worry. I won't, ma- I won't mind. <laughs> Maybe Sir Marco will mind, but me, I won't mind. Liver, right? R-E-S system. Okay. Who else? No, I don't blame them. Kasi, ano, I don't like histo and histopath. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the spleen. Yes, okay. The lungs, um, there are specific pay, per, parts of the lungs that have RES. You need to be specific. Okay. All right. Okay. So, nakalimutan nyo yung may mga payers, patches. Diba? So, any place where there is a, combina- a combination of, um, uh, where, there, where there is consistent destruction of red blood cells and there are macrophages that would eat these things you would see it you would see these uh you would see this reticular endothelial system basically they look like they have reticles Retic- they have reti- uh, you, have you seen a reticulated python a python yung may parang mga patches na mga bilog-bilog na ano itim yun yung tinatawag na reticulating python and i did not know that until i was working in the histopathology lab. Okay? So, nag-autopsy kami. O, tingnan mo yung liver niya. O. 
ayan yung tinatawag na reticuloendothelial system. Ginanon talaga, binuklat talaga ni Doc sa akin yung, hindi pala yung ano, hindi pala yung liver, yung spleen. O, oh, ayan o, oh. tingnan mo, ginanon ni Doc, ng doktor sa akin. Nung pinakita niya sa akin, ayan yung reticuloendothelial system. Kasi mukha siyang yung patches na reticulating python. Alright? So if you look at it also in the microscope it will look like it will have a reticulated path pa, pa, uh it will have a reticulated pattern also. Okay? So am I still sharing my screen? Right. So now we have Shagoma. Yes, um we have Shagoma though, that's the that's the exact portal of entry. I would call it the portal of entry because the uh the lesion produced by the vector, right? Where it's been inoculated. So sometimes they would call it a Shagoma because it has it has a uh, it has a it has a similar characteristic to that of a tumor okay now culture media that can that you can use for um trypanosoma cruzi is again chang's media i'm not sure if you remember chang's media but anything that you remember about trypanosoma cruzi just write it on your notes as letter c Okay? Lahat ng pag-uusapan natin nag-start sa letter C. Amanda, kung nandyan ka man, igalaw mo ang bote, ang baso. Okay? So, Amanda, okay? Amanda, lahat ng tatandaan mo letter C pag trypanosoma cruzi. Okay? So, we have Chang's medium. The characteristic shape is letter C. Okay? Um, stage observed in these samples or in blood smears is your the trypanosomastigotes. And... Experiment, uh, experimental test that you need to remember is that it's usually tested with xenodiagnosis. Okay, so ano yung xenodiagnosis, sir? Gagamit tayo ng hayop. Okay? Animal, animal, experimental animals to give a, to give a, ayan, ginalaw ni Amanda ang ano, guys? Guys, ginalaw ni Amanda ang baso. Amanda na dyan ka pala. Akala ko kaluluwa ka na lang. Bakit hindi ka kasi nagpaparamdam? Amanda, magpakita ka sa akin, Amanda, ngayon. Amanda, where are you? Napoke po po ang ba? Arte, napoke daw niya. Arte naman ang terminology. Anyway, anyway, um, since Amanda is there, alright. Okay, so we're going to talk about Leishmania. Okay, so Leishmania, the habitat of each species of Leishmania, uh, when I say habitat, where it is usually located in, in the human body. Okay, so Leishmania tropica, it's in the endothelial cells of, infect, uh, endothelial cells of infected skin, usually found inside the cytoplasm of monocytes. Um, for Brazilianses, it's in the nasal septum, mouth, or the pharynx. And for Leishmania donovani, it's in the reticuloendothelial system. Okay? Now, what are the vectors, specific vectors for... Um, what the, what's the specific vectors for Leishmania species? So again, we're going to talk about the actual location. Or sorry, the actual species or the genus. It's P. Ano yung P? Pinik, inano ko yan kasi gusto kong makita kung... Merong nag-aaral talaga ng mga scientific names ng mga vectors. Sige, sige. Gusto kong mag may magsagot ng ano yung mga P na yan. Okay? P. Papatasi. Alright? P. Papatasi. Uh, P. 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 Sargenti. Or, uh, that, those are organisms for Leishmania tropica. Leishmania uh, brasiliensi is P. Porwensis. P. Verocarum. And uh, for Leishmania donovani is P. Argentep Argentipes. Okay? So, anong ibig sabihin ng P? Sino ang makakasagot ng P? Plebotomus. Plebotomus. Parang mali ang spelling ng plebotomus. Okay? Parang mali ang spelling ng plebotomus. Double check? Double check ba? Teka nga ako. Parang ako pati ang ano ah. Parang pati ako nag... Parang na, na, nawindang ako sa spelling kasi ng ano, plebotomus. Dali. Double check ko. Double check ko guys. Ayoko magbigay ng maling information. Okay? Nasaan na yun? Mali ang spelling ni ano, kulang ng ano, kulang ng P. <laughs> kulang, kulang ng P. So, anong common name? Anong common name ng plebotomus flies? Anong common name? Raise your hand if you know the answer. Nawindang ako, pati ako, pati ako, kinwestiyon ko ang ano, kung spelling, ano ko ha, valiant ha. Anong other name ng ano? Anong other name ng... Alright, James Paul. 
sand flies, sir. All right, very good. Very good, very good. These are sand flies. Okay, now, cutaneous leishmaniasis is similar to what bacterial infection? It's known as lepromatous leprosy. Okay, what's the difference ng lepromatous leprosy natin with, um, with the other, there are two forms of lep leprosy, right? I've discussed that to you when we were talking about mycobacteriology. Right, right, right? Nakalimutan nyo na? Patay tayo dyan. No? Hindi na tayo babalik doon. Gusto ko talaga, gusto ko mag-self-review kayo. Ayoko na spoon-feeding sa inyo. Nigigil na ako sa inyo. Charat! <laughs> Charat! Alright? So, ayun yung lepromatous leprosy. Lepromatous leprosy is basically what? The fulminant appearance of lesions, di ba? It's the, basically almost the last stage. Siyempre, yung last stage is of course yung organ failure. But lepromatous leprosy is you're going to see a lot of lesions. Yun ay may mga ano kayo, yung may ketong ka na talaga, yung ketongin na yung itsura mo. Okay? Yun yung lepromatous leprosy. Okay? Alright? Now, we have what you call the oriental sore, which is caused by, once again, when, when, when you use the term oriental, okay? Oriental. Again, what happens in the orient, what, what, where is the orients ba? It's in certain areas where there is tropical conditions. So, usually it's Leishmania tropica. Okay? Now, black fever is also caused by Leishmania, and it's caused by Leishmania donovani. But don't make, uh, don't confuse black water fever from black fever. Okay, what's black water fever? Because some people they would confuse these two terms. Black water fever. It's a common disease, guys. Especially in the Philippines, it's endemic in Palawan. Kayo talaga na kalimutan yun na black water fever. It's endemic in Palawan. You have to take a prophylactic uh, medic. You have to take prophylactic medications when you go to before you go to Palawan. Wala pa nakapunta pa ng Palawan dito. Wala. Si Sir, ibig sabihin si ano lang? Ibig sabihin si Sir Marco lang ulit with his Lasallian accent. <laughs> with his las <laughs> with his Lasallian accent. Wala wala na si Sir Marco lang. James Paul, yes. What's your answer? Sir, malaria daw. Very good. Very good. Ah, binasa mo lang pala yung kay Nigel. Nigel, thank you for answering. Alright. Leishmania Donovani. Alright. Now, you can also use culture media for leishmaniasis. We have the NNN media. Okay. Triple N. It's Novi, Nicole, and McNeil. Okay. Bakit McNeil? Yung Neil ang ano. N. Okay. NNN media. That's why I shortened it. NNN. Okay. Para hindi mahirapan si Amanda. Okay. Alam mo, alam mo naman, Amanda. Girl, I got you. Okay. You have, um, you have, you only have short-term memory, so girl, I got you. Okay? Alright, now, we have a skin test also for leishmaniasis. We have the Montenegro test or the Montenegro intradermal test. Okay, this is, but is, this is done by injecting the patient with, um, with antigens or purified antigens of leishmania. Okay? And it's almost similar to, uh, it's almost similar to, what do you call this? Uh, to your PPD test. Okay? But the only difference is that instead of attenuated version of an attenuated version of BCG, you're you're giving you're giving an in, uh, you're giving an intradermal injection of Leishmania antibodies or Leishmania antigens. Okay. Now we also do a screening test for Leishmaniasis. We have what you call the formal gel test, and for a formal gel test, you need to use formaldehyde or formalin. Okay. What you need, um, how to do the test is basically getting 0.1 ml of serum and one drop, one GTTS, okay? Guta, it's guta in Latin. One drop of formalin. The positive, for, positive result is, for, uh, is gel formation. And we're almost finished with the family of um, protozoans. We're going to talk about ciliata, family of ciliata. Now, the only path, uh, ciliate that is pathologic to man is, of course, Balantidium coli. And based on its size, it's the largest protozoan pathogenic to man. Okay, This is, again, another question. Uh, I, this slide is a high-yield slide. You need to put a star on this one. Okay, If you guys received your, your, uh, if you guys received your side shows, please put a star on this one. Okay? Because these questions, they can be very, very high-yield. And it... Uh, if you're going to take the exam, you need to 
have, you need to appreciate every point that you get. Okay? Especially for parasitology. Sayang. Kasi napakadali ng mga questions sa parasitology compared sa Bakti. Okay? Pretty straightforward ang cases. Alright? Now, um, describe the appearance of the following structures inside the Bialtidium coli structure. So we have the macronucleus and the micronucleus. Obviously, the micronucleus looks like a dot. And the macronucleus looks like a kidney bean. Alright? So, macronucleus, micronucleus. So it's the only organism where you need to discuss, uh, where you need to take, an, uh, take into consideration the morphology of the micronucleus and the macronucleus. Okay, so if you see these terminologies, automatically select Balantidium coli. Okay, now um, the function of the of both are different. Of course, the macronucleus is more for the vegetative, um, the vegetative or the what they call it, the cystic form of this one. Uh, sorry, the protective form of the nucleus. While the micronucleus is more or less the reproductive version of this one, this is where the, the micronucleus is where binary fission of this particular organism occurs. It's the starting point or point zero of the of the binary fission. Okay, um, the characteristic motility pattern of Balantidium coli. Paki demonstrate naman ang rolling pattern. Paki patingin nga kung paano mo demonstrate mark ang rolling pattern, ang rolling motility. Oh, kumakanta siya ng There's a fire starting in my heart Ganon! <laughs> Rolling in the deep <laughs> Baliw, ano yan? Bakit ganyan ka? Ano yan? Bakit nag interpretative dance ka dyan? Wag ganon! Para sa itology yung pinag-uusapan natin Diba? Oh, diba? Rolling in the deep Para hindi mo na makalimutan Ano ha? Amanda I'm speaking to you Amanda Pakigalaw ang baso Amanda Okay, pakigalaw ang, ama, ang baso. Alright, now, we're going to talk about sporozoans, but in particular, we're going to talk about two characteristic, uh, two, uh, two uh, general characteristics of sporozoans. They are obligate intracellular parasites, and they do not have the means to move. Okay, the first three, member, the, third, the first three genera that we talked about earlier, sorry, the phyla that we talked about, phylum mastigafora, phylum rhizopoda, phylum ciliata, they all have motility apparatuses or organelles but for sporozoans they do not have the means to move and also they don't um, they don't have a free living form diba yung amoeba meron diba we have free living amoeba right naglera polari and acanth amoeba right now for um, those are the two general characteristics they are obligate intracellular parasites and they do not have a means of locomotion a definitive means of locomotion now how do we, uh, how, what do we talk about? Uh, what, what would we talk about? Now, there are two types of reproductive. Um, um, for plasmodium, we're going to discuss plasmodium first. What are the two types of reproductive cycles that plasmodium have? It, it has a sexual cycle and an asexual cycle. Now, it occurs, these two cycles occurs in the hosts, in different hosts. Um, the sexual cycles occur in the anthropod host. And the asexual cycle occurs inside the human host or occurs in man. Okay? Now, other terms that may be associated with the reproductive cycles of plasmodium. So you might get terms or you might get uh, you might get terminologies confused with each other. But for your information, the sexual life cycle or the sexual cycles are known as porogony, and the asexual cycle is known as the schizogony. Okay, um, I think when I was when I was learning these things, they said it's schizogony. Um, you again, you guys, uh, you guys decide on how you would pronounce it. But what I need you to go, what I need you to remember on test day is that you need to select the correct answer. Okay, so sexual sporogony, hence the term sporocysts. Okay, asexual is the schizogony formation or the reproductive life cycle schizogony and the product is of course a schizont okay so naririnig niyo ba yung mga terminologies na yan okay so may mga may mga schizont na yan yung mga sporocysts okay so please don't forget those terminologies because we we'll, this will be very important when we talk about the organisms in detail now what is the definitive host of plasmodium that is your next question 
what is the definitive host of plasmodium oh but it's a common it's a common question in the exam please put a star on this one if i'm going to if i'm going to come up uh, if i'm going to come to the exam and i did not know anything and i was just cramming 30 minutes before before my board exams this is a question that you might see in your board exams who is or what is the definitive host of plasmodium raise your hand if you know Well, bibigay ko kayo ng choices. Nako, patay tayo, Sir Marco. Sir Marco, malaria. Parang there is a... Nigel, sige. Nigel. Yung definitive host po is yung mosquito and then yung intermediate host yung line. Very good. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Look back into our in uh, our previous discussion. Two weeks ago, we discussed what is the what is the what do you call this? What stage of the uh, sorry? Um, the definitive host is where the sexual stages of the organism occurs, diba? Diba naalala nyo? Diba? It is the host that harbors the sexual stages the definitive host is the one that harbors the sexual stages of the organism eh, ano ba yung sagot dito sa taas kanina oh saan nangyayari ang sexual cycle sa anthropod vector diba so ang definitive host niya is the is the anopheles mosquito or specifically the female anopheles mosquito anong female anong specific uh specific species or genera anopheles what mali ang spelling ng ano mali ang spelling ng definitive ano ba yan amanda nakagating kita ha anong specific species ng mosquito anopheles minismus flavirostris yun yung kakalimutan guys ha and the intermediate host is of course the man. Okay. Now, let's go with the sex, the asexual life cycle. Okay. Next for asexual life cycle, I will just I will just briefly run through it. Amanda, I did this for you. Okay. Nagmamadali po mag-type. Sorry. Okay. Akala ko ano? Akala ko mali talaga. All right. Very good, Amanda. Okay. So Amanda, wag mo kakalimutan ha. Ayoko ng ano. Ang pangit ng ano ko dito. Pang ano ko to eh. Pang review center ko. I need to come up with something witty. Wala akong maisip eh. SCMSG na lang. Yung monosodium glutamate. Inalagay mo sa... <laughs> Iba? Medyo bastos kasi yung ano ko. Ayoko. Hindi ko pwedeng sabihin dito sa ano. Baka ma-demonetize tayo. Pero, the asexual life cycle starts with, again, these porozoites. It becomes cryptozoites and it becomes merozoites and then it becomes schizoids and gametozoites. Okay? That is basically the asexual life cycle. Pero sir, sabi mo kanina, merong ano, merong shizogony. Diba? Yun yung sexual life cycle. Kasi nagre-ready na sila for sexual, sexual stages. Okay? So, um, in the life cycle, in the asexual life cycle, the end product is basically a male form or a, ma a male gametocyte or a female gametocyte. Okay? So, that is basically what happens. So, what, let's start, let's, let's look at it. Uh, let's look at it uh, fully. Sporozoites are in within the mosquito. They would inject it to man, okay? And the cryptozoites will go to the liver, and then would go to an extra. Sorry, pindot ko. They would go to an extra. They would end an exoerythrocytic life cycle, which means it's in the end. Uh, uh, which means it's not the. It's the end of the outside, the RBCs. The life cycle outside the an RBC. So it means it's in the in the liver, cryptozoites, okay, and then it goes to the uh, it goes to the blood cells and forms merozoites, okay, and spread upon blood uh, uh, RBC rupture, okay. The ring forms develop in nearby RBCs as well, and this will then catch and develop into um, uh, ring forms. These ring forms are basically um, uh, going to form schizonts and the schizonts will become a micro or macro from, from an erythrogenic cycle. 
Okay? They will form those forms. Okay? So starting from from the mosquito, they will they start they are going to be sporozoites, sporozoites, and then they will go to the liver. Okay? And then and the liver they will end they will develop into merozoites making them ready to go to the red blood cells, okay? They will go to the red blood cells and then they would they would attach themselves they would rupture the red blood cells because they multiply of course they will multiply and they go to they go and form ring forms in the in nearby rbcs in the bloodstream and they develop into schizons these these schizons are originally the ring forms that we just talked about from the previous merozoites and then they would become gametocytes micro or macro gametocytes from the erythrogenic cycle okay basically that's what happens now indicate the sexes of the following in parasitology sino ang mas maliit who's the who's the smaller one right differentiate these sexes sino dito ang male sino dito ang female in parasitology it's always the rule of um it, it's 95 percent of the time it's a rule of thumb for my parasitologists that the males are what the larger one or the smaller one yung kalimutan Smaller. The what? The smaller po. Sorry, hindi po na grace na. Okay, so gametocytes. Yes, the micro gametocytes. So mas maliit micro nga eh. Micro. Okay? So for macro, it's the females. Okay? Tingnan natin kung tama. Tama. Alright? Alright, now. Now, what happens in the sexual life cycle of plasmodium? So for plasmodium, they would go into a different life cycle. They have the sexual life cycle. They will start as gametocytes, of course. G, jaws, okay, jaws or gzaws. Ayan na Amanda para sa yo gzaws, sir. There's so many things to remember, de ba ganon, alright? So there's so many. Ayan na tinanong yung tinanong mo lang Amanda yung ichura ni ano on ni Valiant. Oh, kinakamot kamot yung ulo. Gosh, there's so many things to remember. Diba? Para hindi mo makalimutan. Alright? Jesus. So, ano ba yung Jesus na yan? Ano ba yung Jesus na yan? Jesus. O, diba? Pwede din yung gano'n ng spelling mo. Pwede din gano'n yung ano. Kasi, diba? Ganyan din kayo minsan mag-pronounce ng G yung Jesus. Gano'n ng spelling. <laughs> Kasi, Papa Jesus. Ganyan yung spelling na ano nila. Ganyan. Alright? So, may, mga, may nanarinig ako nag-lead ng prayers minsan eh. Thank you, Papa Jesus. Ganun sila magbasa. So, huwag yung kalimutan Jesus. Okay? Jesus. All right. Now, gametocytes will be acquired from the by the mosquito in a form of a from a blood meal. So, yun yung inject sa yung gametocytes. Kaya nga di ba sabi ko sa inyo, the end products of every organism of every cycle is the opposite, di ba? Kanina sinabi ko kanina, ang product ng sporogony is a schizont, di ba? Ang product naman ng ang product naman ng schizogony is a sporocyst. Okay? Gets? Bakit so kanina kung bakit important yung terminology sa sinabi ko kanina? Now, since ang product ni ni sporogony is gametocytes, mag-start tayo ng sexual life cycle with gametocytes, di ba? Uh, ng sexual life cycle with gametocytes kasi male and female na siya. Okay? Now, the gametocytes will be then in, will be injected to the human, to the human host or the intermediate host via a blood meal and then it will go to the gut and develops into a zygote, all right? The zygote then becomes an oocyst in the, in the gut again, and via what you call the terminology of encystment. And then, after some time, sporozoites will be released and travel to salivary organs, to the salivary glands of the mosquito, okay? They are, they are usually brought in via the blood flow or the tissue fluid flow to the saliva of mosquitoes. Okay? Clear? Clear, clear ba? So, huwag nyo kalimutan lang yung life cycle. Okay? I, you don't really need to remember, you don't really need to remember the exact locations. What I need you to remember is the stages. Tingnan nyo, gametocyte, zygotes, oocyst, and sporozoites. Tingnan nyo, oh, ang end product ng sexual life cycle is sporozoites. Meaning, mag i start na yung asexual life cycle kapag ka nakakagat si mosquito ng tao. Di ba? Ay nang pagka yeah, pagka nakakagat na siya, di ba? Ba di ba di ba di ba? Ay de, sorry pala. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Before siyang makakagat kasi sporozoites nga, di ba? Babalik siya sa loob ng babalik siya sa loob ng ano ng 
um, mosquito pala. Yeah. So, yeah. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Pupunta pala siya sa edge ng mosquito and then i-inject pala siya kay human. Tapos pupunta na sa oh, liver, blah, 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 and everything else. Okay? So, huwag nyo kalimutan yung SCMSG nyo. Okay? SCMSG. Alright? Now, the recurrent chills from the fever of malaria, uh, from chills and fever of malaria is, syn- is synchronized in what event, with what events happening in the human body of the intermediate host. The rupture of RBCs. Okay? Kaya ka nagkakaroon ng fever. Alright? Rupture of RBCs. And there is a subsequent release of the gametocytes in the bloodstream. Okay? Now, based on paroxysms, you can differentiate the species of plasmodium with the following. Plasmodium falciparum is 36 hours. Every 36 hours, there is paroxysms of chills and fever. Okay? And this is known as the malignant tertian malaria. Okay? Plasmodium ovale and plasmodium vivax is known as benign tertian, uh, benign tertian malaria or um, benign tertian form of malaria because it occurs every, sorry, every 48 hours. For plasmodium malariae, this is known as the quartan one because it occurs every 72 hours. Okay? Quartan malaria. Okay? Now, what species of malaria is considered to be the most fatal? The most fatal. Sige. Who here knows the most fatal form of malaria, which is also present in the Philippines? James Paul. Why is it the most? Uh, why is it the most fatal among all the four members that we've talked about today? Sir, um, it infects young and aging RBC. Yun lang. Dahil yun lang. Okay. So, we'll see the correct answer. It's actually the causative agent of cerebral malaria. Okay? It can pass through the blood-brain barrier without any effort. Okay? Clear? It can pass through the blood-brain barrier without any effort. And it's also known as black water fever. O, di ba? Ayan na. O, di ba? Di ba yung black fever, ha? Wag, wag kayong, ano, wag yung iglo-confuse yung black water fever kanina, ha? I am black fever kanina. Alright? Now, what are the signs of black water fever? Sudden intravascular hemorrhage and hemoglobinuria. Bakit nagkakaroon ng hemoglobinuria? Kasi may intravascular hemorrhage. Diba? Yes? If there's an increased level of, if there's an increased level of hemoglobin, the renal threshold will not be able to carry it and therefore it will release it into the patient's urine. Thus resulting into hemoglobinuria. Diba? Pasok pa, ano lang siya, interconnected lang siya. Diba? 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 Everything that you studied in hematology is also correlative to what you are learning in parasitology. Alright, now, what conditions would render a person resistant to malaria? This one is a blood bank question. Without prophylaxis, okay? Without prophylaxis, you are considered to be a person resistant to malaria if you are one of the following patients. You are a patient with G6PD. You are a patient with sickle cell disease, not sickle cell trait, sickle cell disease. And you're a patient with Daphinal. Okay, this is a blood bank question. You might find this interesting. Okay, now, differentiate the, the species of plasmodium based on the number of merozoids. This is something that I don't want you guys to remember, but this is another thing that actually James Paul just mentioned earlier. The reason why plasmodium falciparum is my, it's much more dangerous, it's because it has a lot of merozoids. It produces a lot of merozoids. And when there's a lot of merozoids, the infectivity, or sorry, the amount of RBCs that it can potentially destroy is significantly increased. Okay? Plasmodium vivax is second with 16. Okay? Plasmodium ovale and plasmodium malariae, uh, roughly around 8. Okay? So, don't forget those things. Alright? Now, let's move on to red cells. Now, all red cells... Uh, all red cells are in malarial infections are of normal size. Are of normal size. Mali ang grammar ko yun kasi remember, I just made this, I just made this when I was a kid. So ter- terribly sorry. All right? All red cells of malarial infections are of normal size except for what species? There are two species. Plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale. Okay? Plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale. Why? Because we're going to talk about that later when we talk at the RBC morphologies during the infections. Okay? Describe the trophozoites of plasmodium <coughs> of each trasmodium species. So, trophozoites, sir. Bakit trophozoites, sir? 
kasi yan yung time na para mag-transfer transfer na sila sa parts ng body okay which is usually seen in the blood smear okay so for plasmodium falciparum the trophozoites is an applique form plasmodium vivax is amoeboid for plasmodium ovale is fibrated yung parang ano siya parang kamukha siya ng fimbre ng kamukha siya ng fimbre nung ovaries ng mga female sa anatomy and physiology ninyo and for malaria it's a band form okay now, all stages of malaria can be seen in the peripheral blood of infected individuals except for the following. Okay, all stages of plasmodium can be seen in stages of malaria, in all, except for what species? Plasmodium falciparum and plasmodium malariae. Because you can only see the young ring forms and the gametocytes for these two organs, for plasmodium falciparum. For plasmodium malariae, it's the strope, it's the trophozoites in the shy zones. That's the only thing that you can see. Okay? Now, let's talk about uh, the red cells, the types of red cells infected by each species. Okay? As I mentioned before, um, plasmodium vivax and plasmodium ovale, they are what? They are, <clears throat> they are of normal size. Therefore, they will only infect younger cells. The ones that they just, the ones, the red cells that were just released prior to its maturation, uh, its maturation series. Okay? So, pagka normal site na siya, saka lang siya pupuntahan ni, yun lang ang pinapansin ni Plasmodium vivax and Plasmodium ovale. Plasmodium falciparum, kaya nga sinabi, namin, sinabi ko kanina, that's the most deadliest or the most fatal form of malaria would be from Plasmodium falciparum is because it can infect any, hindi siya choosy. Okay? Plasmodium falciparum is not choosy. It will go in any red blood cell. Whether it's about to die, it's about it's still young, wala siyang pinipili. Kumbaga, in terms of the sexual world, it is the pansexual version. Okay? The pansexual, or the pan-red blood cell infector, infection. It has a pan-red cell infectivity. For plasmodium mal malariae, medyo ang gusto niya yung mga cougar. Okay? Yung mga cougar na mga red blood cells ang pinupuntahan niya. O, ba? Meron tayo mga ginawang analogy para kay, para kanino yan. Para kay Amanda. Okay? Amanda, pakigalaw ang baso kung, talag kung naintindihan mo, ha? Alright, Amanda. Hindi ka nagpaparamdam sa akin ngayon. Alright, now. Ito yung isa sa mga important things that you need to remember when you are uh, when you are looking at a slide for malaria. Okay? So, I'm not going to discuss what it looks like because it requires you guys to go in, in an in-depth training. And I cannot teach it to you guys without showing you the actual slides. Okay? Uh, but because we are, but we, because the purpose of our lecture is to prepare you for your exams, I'm going to give you the shortcuts. Okay? Huwag niyong kakalimutan si Vilma Santos. Yung dots na yon. Vilma Santos, Ferdinand Marcos, Orange Juice, at Ang maze. Ano yung maze, sir? Alright, pupuntahan natin sila. Vilma Santos, Plasmodium Vibax, diba? VS, diba? Actually, in our hospital, uh, in our school, it, this is not Ferdinand Marcos, okay? It's actually Ferdinand Mortel. If you, if you're, if one of you guys is from uh, Manila Central University, you would remember, you would know Sir Mortel. Okay, for Ferdinand Marcos for general students. Okay, um, falciparum and Maurer's dots, plasmodium ovale, orange juice with James dot. Kung yung kalimutan si James Paul. Okay, okay, and then plasmodium malariae, maize. All right, um, or you could say Manila Zoo. Para hindi yung makalimutan. All right, pumunta si Vilma Santos at per Ferdinand Marcos while walking hand in hand. With one orange juice. Oh, ayan na para hindi nyo makalimutan talaga. May story. Ginawan ko na ng story para sa inyo, ha? Okay? Pag ito ba naman hindi mo pa naalala talaga, Amanda, ewan ko na lang. Okay? Si Vilma Santos at si Ferdinand Marcos holding hands sila. Binil nilibre ni Ferdinand Marcos kasi maraming pera si Ferdinand Marcos nung panahon na yon ng orange juice. Tapos nagpunta sila ng Manila Zoo. Okay? Kasi nihirap niyang alalahanin kasi tinan niyo yung spelling o oh, puro mga ano... Pinabdi ba yung mga spelling? Naka, ang hirap na ang alalahanin ng spelling. Tapos ano pa, okay? So, yun ang kakalimutan nyo. Huwag nyo kakalimutan, ha? Guys? Guys, ha? Please. Ha? Huwag nyo kakalimutan, okay? Pumunta si Vilma Santos at Ferdinand Marcos sa Manila Zoo na may hawak na orange juice. 
Oh, ayan na. Okay? Witty, sir. Ngayon ko lang na uso. Ngayon ko lang na ano yon. Witty ba? Witty. Mapapalakpak <laughs> pa si Mark. Palakpak naman kayo yung pambakla. Please. <laughs> Please lang. <laughs> Visit ka, James. Isa nga, isa nga, Arnie. Yung pambakla, Arnie. Pambaklain ko talaga si Arnie. Arnie, ba? Mama... <laughs> <laughs> pwede magbakla Valiant pwede magbakla si ano si Arnie pwede, pwede. hindi pwede last na niya yan last na niya no sasaksakin na natin siya <laughs> pag na ganyan ganyan siya pre walang bakla pre ha? pre walang bakla dito sa ano na to okay alright now let's talk about let's talk about the daisy fruit and the daisy fruit pie merzoit Uh, it is a characteristic. Uh, is a characteristic of what? It's Plasmodium malariae. Okay. So the the term daisy fruit pie or a fruit pie or daisy head that would usually be associated or synonymous to Plasmodium malariae. If you see this, if you see these two terms, um, daisy head and fruit pie, you'll see it in you you please select Plasmodium malariae. Okay. Now. Um, Let's go to the species that are capable of multiple ring infection. Again, as I mentioned before, another reason why Plasmodium falciparum is deadly, it's because of the fact that it is capable of doing multiple ring infections. Kasi nga, di ba, pag sumabog yung RBC, magre-release siya ng mga alipores niya, kakapit dun sa nearby blood cells, di ba? In most species of Plasmodium will, be, will only be able to infect one. Parang kasi maarte ako. Hindi maarte si ano eh. eh yung iba maarte, di ba? Ayoko, hindi yan old. Diba? Ay, ayoko, hindi yan yang Gusto ko mas bata kasi mas masarap yung RBC pagka ganun. Walang kamanyakan ha. Kayo talaga Arnie at saka ano ha. Walang kamanyakan. Okay? Arnie at saka Mark Segi. Ikaw nagtatago ka kasi ngumingisi ka Mark ha. Alright? So, yun. So, si Plasmodium falciparum, it's capable of doing so because hindi nga siya choosy. Okay? So, it's capable of doing multiple ring infections. Now, let's go to the laboratory analysis. Okay? Um, we'll do. We'll we'll talk about malarial smears first. For thick smears, it's used for screening, and you need to do dehemoglobinization before you do that. Okay, before you before you before you actually look at the malarial parasites and stain the smears, and usually you would stain it with gemsa. For thin smears, it's used for the for speciation or identification of species, and it is usually done by uh, before you do before you read it or before you stain anything. You need to do fixation okay all right and then you stain it with gem sustain all right now there is a qualitative test for malaria and it's known as qbc it's known as quantitative buffy coat technique and it requires fluorochromes therefore you need to use a fluorescence microscope and the stain that you use is acridine orange now anong kwenta sir anong purpose kasi doon natin mamemeasure kung Gano karami yung malarial parasite. So QBC, we use the buffy coat actually. It's really, it's really, it's really not done anymore because it, aside from being expensive and requiring, uh, re requiring better facilities, it does not really help out in in determining the stage of the of malarial parasite. But it is an option for many for many physicians. Now there is also a serological test for malaria. Which is the op the most optimal test is of course parasitic LDH. Okay, the optimal test. Uh, sorry. Um. Yeah, it's a parasitic LDH. Okay, Malquick tests HRP2, which is histidine rich rich protein, which is only seen in Plasmodium falciparum. Okay, so those are the only things that you guys need to remember when you want to study malaria. Okay, now. We're going to go with another organism, which is Babesia. Hindi siya Babesia, ha? Huwag kayong Echocera dyan. Babesia. It's Babesia. Okay? And the type organism that you need to remember in this particular organ, in this particular discussion, is Babesia microti. The definitive host of Babesia microti is deers. Okay? So, yung mga pupunta ng U.S., pupunta ng United Kingdom or deep woods or sa deep woods ng Australia or New Zealand yung mga <laughs> mga kagubatan okay please be mindful of Babesia microti okay wow 
The vector for Babesia microti is the exodistics, okay? Exodistics. And aside from a bite from the vector, how is Babesia microti transmitted? Through blood transfusions, okay? Because very rarely in many countries, Babesia is not tested. Actually, here in, in the Middle East, I have never tested or screened a blood uh, I've never blood I've never screened a patient's blood for babesia because there's no deers here there's a lot of camels or cows or sheep but there's not a lot of deers okay so majority of the time the transmission according to the World Health Organization another reason for getting babesia microti is through blood transfusions okay clear now Immunocompetent, uh, immune, in an immunocompetent host, what pathogenic findings may be associated with babesiosis? So there are path there is again a form of hemolytic anemia and hemoglobinuria. So um, um, most of the time they would see this in immunocompetent immunocompetent uh, hosts. Okay, most of the time. Okay, now. Babesia microti has a similar appearance to Plasmodium falciparum except for the fact that it does not have merozoites, it does not have trophozoites, and the vectors are ticks. Okay? Okay? <clears throat> now, we also have what you call Babesia bigemia. Okay? Babesia bigemia is a new one, I suppose. I'm not uh, familiar with this one when I was a student, but after I took the ACP, I just got informed about this particular organism. It is known as red water fever because, 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 because it is a uh, it is a form of um it's a form of microorganism. It's a it's a form of it's a it's a parasite that causes a disease in cattle. Okay. Now let's talk about toxoplasmosis, another plas sporozoan. All right. So it's another sporozoan. The definitive host of toxoplasma is again not human it is cats okay so please don't forget that one and it its intermediate host is man the infective stage of toxoplasma or toxo or toxoplasma gondii is oocysts from cat feces sir bakit ano ba gagawin ng pasyente ano ba gagawin ng ano ano ba gagawin ng tao para makakuha ng ng cat feces. Ay paano makakuha ng oocyst? Kakainin ng pasyente ang ano, ang nakain ng pasyente ang pupo ng ano. No. Yung mga nag-aalaga ng pusa. Kasi 'di ba yung mga pusa minsan dila-dila, 'di ba? Dila-dila sila sa sarili nila. And then they would have the oocyst present in the fur. Sometimes, sometimes yung nagkakamot sa scratch post, eh yung mga tao hahawak, 'di ba? Doon sa areas na 'yon. So, pwedeng makuha ni ni caregiver ng pusa. So, pwede yun. Okay? So, this is another reason why you need to remember about, why you need to take into consideration um, toxoplasmosis. Okay? Now, this what uh, what is the characteristic shape of the trophozoite of T. gondii on tissue fluids? It is crescent-shaped. Okay? Crescent-shaped. And the actively dividing trophozoite of toxoplasma gondii, which is the actively dividing, it's actually known as a Bradyzoid, I uh, sorry, a tachyzoid is the actively dividing one. There's two types of trophozoites, by the way. Um, the tachyzoid is the active one, and the inactive one is the bradyzoids. Okay? Alright? So, madaming zoids ngayon tayo ng alalahanin. Now, um, a test that is used to differ, to diag uh, for the definitive diagnosis of toxoplasmosis, or the diagnostic test for toxoplasmosis, is known as the Sabin Feldman dye. Um, the principle of the test is that you're staining the blood smear with methylene blue, then the addition of patient serum with anti-D. And the antibodies will result to staining inhibition. Okay? So, hindi may stain yung mga, <coughs> yung mga blood cells na may, anti may antitoxoplasma. Okay? Okay? Clear? Okay? Clear ba, guys? Clear, 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 class? Clear? Clear? Okay, so we can still continue. Let's talk about isospora belly and cryptosporidium parvum. Sir, ang dami naman. Ano ba yan? Ganun talaga, guys. Microbiology siya. Okay? Part pa rin siya ng microbiology. Okay? Huwag kayong mag-alala. Meron pa tayong two slideshows na pagdadaanan. 
pa, uh, mycology and virology class. Huwag kayong mag-alala. Marami pa tayong pagdadaanan ng class. Bukas. Okay? Now, what is the definitive host of Isospora belly? Alright? Let's talk about Isospora belly for a while. The definitive host is man and the intermediate host is pigs. And laboratory tests to diagnose the to, to diagnose Isospora belly infection is usually through what? Through stool examination, and modified acid fast staining. Now, I need to ask you guys a question. What is the modified acid, pa uh, acid fast staining procedure that we usually do? What do we usually change in acid fast staining procedures? In order for us to demonstrate partially acid fast organisms. Patay tayo dyan. Pag nakalimutan nyo, magtatawag ako, Nigel, <laughs> the big lash, the big lash. <laughs> Nigel, anong ina, anong usually pinapaltan kapag ka mag mag shift ka from modified acid fast staining? Yung primary stain ba? Yung decolorizer ba? Or yung counter stain? Hmm. Hindi, no. Decolorizer, magiging 1% sulfuric acid ba? Very good! Girl! Sure. Girl! Pakipalak pa ka naman, class. Class, pakipalak pa ka yung pabakla. Ay, yung pabakla. Arnie, wag ka na ano. Hindi bagay sa'yo. Arnie, stop it! <laughs> Arnie, stop it! Alright, thank you, class, for helping, uh, for giving Nigel the, the, the benefit of the doubt na siya lang ang feeling kong papasa. <laughs> for not giving her the benefit of the doubt. All right, because why? Bakit yan yung mga bakit ko bakit ako? Ba, why did I come to that assumption? Na si Ali, si Nigel lang ang feeling kong papasa. Feeling kong papasa, not 100% sure, ha. Okay? Kasi yung mga basics alam niya. Okay? Na gets nyo? Yung mga yun yung mga dapat yung tandaan, yung mga basics kasi pag hindi niyo alam yung mga basics, eh, paano pa kaya yung case presentations, 'di ba? 'Di ba? 'Di ba? 'Di ba? 'Di ba? Okay? Now, Let's go to um, uh, let's go to the uh, what do you call this specimens that are used for acid fast uh, sorry that may be used to observe the oocyst and the sporocysts. Okay, so because the in, the mode of transmission is is ingestion of of oocysts and sporocysts, how do we uh, what uh, what what specific samples are we looking for? For oocysts, we're looking at the stools. Okay. For sporocysts, we're looking at the duodenum. Okay? So, ano ba ang pinagkaiba, sir? Um, bakit kailangan... Bakit iba ang ina-expect natin? Kasi pag sporocyst ang titingnan mo, yun yung mga young forms niya, di ba? Okay, pag oocyst, ayan na yung ready na siyang... Ready na siya mag-multiply to another organism. Kaya stool, lagi ang titingnan natin. Similar to... Similar to where we can isolate um, toxoplasma. Okay? So... Stools usually sila. Kasi pag pa usually sa stool mo talaga sila makikita. Okay? Kasi pag palabas na siya eh. Now, let's talk about the intracellular stages of isospora belly. Where, what samples do we use? Intracellular. Patay tayo dyan, sir. Blood cell na naman. Blood na naman. Hindi. Biopsy material. Okay? Biopsy material ang gagamitin natin. Kasi usually, ang mga merong diseases na affect na, na makaka-apekto sa iyo when it comes to sporozoans specifically isospora and cryptosporidium wag niyo kakalimutan yung mga immunocompromised patients particularly particularly class HIV cases with fulminant aids yung less than 20 na lang less than 200 na yung CD4 count nila okay so sila na yung nagpo-post nagpo-produce ng Kaposi sarcoma yung mga mga ganun yun okay now Let's talk about cryptosporidium. What are the species that we are talking about that can cause human diseases? Cryptosporidium parvum and cryptosporidium hominis. Okay? The diagnostic tests for cryptosporidium parvum and cryptosporidium hominis are two of the following. You can use a modified acid fast staining again. You can use stool examination and you can use sheet or sugar floating flotation tests. But I would not advise you as new newbies. For example, dinala kayo sa isang uh, dinala kayo sa isang AFB laboratory. Okay? So, in some hospitals, they have only, they have a separate microbiology section and an AFB laboratory section. 
dinala kayo sa AFB section. Tapos sabi niya, Sir, sir gusto ko gagamitin, gagamit kami ng Shether Sugar Flotation. No, that is the old test. Okay? That is for research purposes. Okay? What you're going to use is tool examinations. Makakakita ka ng parang merong maraming mga butlig-butlig sa whip, sa pupo, pero hindi siya parang ano, hindi siya fat globules. Yan yung mag a advice ka sa, sa may pathologist mo na, ah, okay, I think we need to stain it with acid fast stain. Kasi baka mamaya, hindi siya, hindi siya fat globules. Okay? So, sa, paano ba natin malalaman ang fat globules? Kasi yung fat globules, na, meron siyang refraction. So, hindi ko siya maituro sa inyo kasi you need to, uh, you need to have a microscope in front of you. And unfortunately, I would not be able to do so given that we have, we're working in, we're, we're discussing in a Zoom meeting, I sorry, in a Google Meet meeting. But, let me just give you an example. Pag um, tumingin kayo sa salamin, may mag-drop kayo ng water. I sorry, mag-drop kayo ng water. If you put your uh, if you guys have a pocket mirror with you, you drop a water, you drop a uh, you drop a uh, you put a drop of water there. You'll see it reflecting light several ways, right? Parang may droplet ng water, parang it's a, it's not showing exactly what you can what is on the other side of the mirror usually your mirror would reflect what is in front of you right or what is in front of the mirror but when you put a drop of water parang nagiging ano siya parang nagiging blurry right or parang hindi nagiging clear yung nakikita mo so ganun yung nangyayari kapag ka, kapag ka nag stool examinations ka parang hindi siya fat globule talaga parang walang refraction okay now that is the time that you will perform acid fast stain on the patient's stool Okay, talag, sir, ginagawa din pala ang acid fast staining sa stool. Yes. Okay? Pero there's a specific, uh, there's a specific, specific, me uh, a specific methodology for that one. Because you need to fix this to the organisms in the stool. And it depends on the, it depends on the laboratory protocols. Sometimes, not, not many laboratories perform these things. Okay? So those are the things that, um, I think that is the end of our lecture. Yeah, that is the end of our lecture for parasitology. We are done with parasitology, and but today we are we no longer have time. I'm going to ask questions in today's lecture um, for preparation, diba, sir, sir Marco, diba? Prepared ako ngayon, diba? Unlike last week, hindi ako prepared. Hindi ko nakita, hindi ko mahanap yung lecture ko, diba? Walang delay in tactics. Uh oh, oh. Walang, walang delay tactics ngayon. Walang delay tactics ngayon because I'm prepared today. Actually, yung preparation ko is, um, I think yung Google Forms na itinanong ko sa mga last students natin, Sir Marco, no? Nasaan na nga ba yung Google Forms na yun? Google Forms. Yung pa-exam natin sa kanila dati, pwede ko bang gamitin yun na ano, na case presentation para sa kanila? Kasi, sure, why not? Kasi, ano... Iba naman yung exam nila eh. Every every batch yan, wag kayong mag-alala. Hindi kayo hindi kayo hindi kayo tatanungin ni Sir Marco ng pare-parehas na question kasi baka mamaya sabihin niyo ano eh. Nasaan na ba 'yun? Nawala na yung Google Forms na sinend mo sa akin dati. Where is it? Magpa-practice tayo, guys. Ha? Gusto ko sasagot kayo kasi pag hindi kayo sumagot, patay tayo dyan. Let's just end the live stream now. Um, Mark, can you double check if I ended the live stream? Hindi pa po.